In past times, herbs boiled in beef tallow or pig fat were used as salves for the working class. Salves made with precious oils were reserved for royalty. Beeswax was sometimes added to the hot fat to make the salve less greasy. Today, salve is a generic term for gels, creams, and ointments used for topical application of medicines. The difficulty in making a salve is to get the right proportions so that the salve is not too soft or too hard. In general, four parts of oil to one part wax is a workable blend. Too much oil makes the salve soft and fragile in storage. Too much wax makes the salve unable to penetrate the skin. Penetrating the skin for a salve is the focus of the work. The top layer of the skin is the stratum corneum, that's a membrane that resists water. Salves rich in oil present a difficulty for any water-soluble medicinal substance in the salve need to stay united to an oil. That unity is necessary in order for the medicine to get access to the blood that's beneath the skin. Getting access to the blood through the skin requires transdermal properties that can unite water-soluble and oil-soluble properties in gels, creams, and ointments. Gels are water-soluble colloids that resemble the cytoplasm of the cells. Some algae gels are also friendly to oils and lipids. A drawback is that gels rapidly diminish their effectiveness because they enter the blood very quickly because of the water. They are often linked with technical application of ultrasound and infrared devices in order that they can become more effective at crossing the boundary to get into the blood. Creams are salves that are made of 50% water and 50% oil. Creams are used to give transdermal access while retaining viability for a longer time than gels. They're a blend of water-soluble elements and oil-soluble elements that can cross the boundary to get into the blood. They're a blend of water and oil, and they require vigorous mechanical agitation in order to form. Creams also require strong surfactants and emulsifiers that can help the oil and water to maintain unity across the transdermal boundary and to stay as a cream when they are on the shelf. Cell membranes are composed of water-soluble and oil-soluble blends. A surfactant loosens the membranes so that whatever is outside the membrane can pass through. An emulsifier is a particular kind of surfactant that balances the membranes between water and oils. This allows for passage in and out of the membrane. Emollient properties of lanolin or special waxes are also used. They are a kind of surfactant, but they are used to seal off the membranes and to lock them. These ingredients create shelf life problems in creams as oil and water tend to separate when they sit for a long while, and if there are a lot of emollients, um, then there is a tendency for separation. So industrially, powerful chemical surfactants and emulsifiers are added along with emollients to keep creams from separating on the shelf. An ointment is 80% oil, and that allows that the ointment stays on the skin the longest. This allows any medicinal substances longer access to work across the skin barrier into the blood. A problem exists when water-soluble substances need to be added to an ointment. The oil resists the water. And for that reason, the medicinal properties that are best suited to ointments come from minimizing water-soluble ingredients. 
combination of volatile oils with fixed carrier oils are the best. They may still require surfactants to work well, and this is because the crossing of a cell phospholipid membrane requires that a surfactant interact with the phospholipids to enhance mobility across the membrane. Essential oils can possess surfactant properties when used in an ointment. My cells are molecular microspheres. They are composed of an inner tail formation of oils and an outer formation of water-soluble, phosphorus-rich solutions. Water-soluble phosphorus in the outer layer regulates the activity of the lipid center. My cells form spontaneously when oil and water interact at a molecular level in things like hydrosols. My cells naturally unite at the molecular level so that the water-soluble parts connect up and the oil-soluble parts connect up. They form then a universal bilayer cell membrane where there is a membrane on the inside and then on the outside. The outside of the membrane is water-soluble and the inside of the membrane is oil-soluble. The single layers form phospholipid bilayers. Phospholipid bilayers are the universal form of all cell membranes. Research shows that volatile essential oils when balanced with fixed carrier oils can readily navigate the phospholipid bilayers. And these oil blends can take the place of salves that require surfactants, emulsifiers, and emollients. Fixed oils are from seeds, like olive, almond, and sunflower. They are common carrier oils for the more volatile essential oils. Other fixed oils, like linseed oil, coconut palm, peanut, and sesame, are used in cooking. Other seed oils, like black seed cumin, is high in sulfur and can energize a carrier, but it needs to be below 10% of the blend. Another seed oil, jojoba, is rich in natural emollient waxes. Essential oils require carriers of fixed oils to prevent them from volatizing off of the skin. Essential oils are mostly from flowers. They're fragrant and volatile, and they have the ability to penetrate the skin barrier effectively and enter the blood with their medicinal properties. The terpenes in essential oils represent the surfactant and medicinal aspect of ointments. Plant families prized for their essential oils are the pine family, the citrus family, the mint family, and the artemisia families. The pines include cedar, fir, and spruce, and they're generally tonic and balancing. The citrus family, lemon, orange, and mandarin, are generally calming. Mint family oils, basil, marjoram, lemon balm, are generally antispasmodic and digestive. Artemisia family oils, mugwort, sagebrush, yarrow, are generally protective against anxiety. These oils make a very limited list of a vast world of essential oils and their influences, but it's provided to suggest that blends useful for different issues linked to inflammation can be made that help with sensory disturbances that, re that disrupt the digestive, nervous, and immune systems. Carrier oils and essential oils together take the place of salve. As an example, the following oils can be used as blends to balance the hot and cold symptoms related to inflammatory response. Cooling oils like yarrow, chamomile, and lavender are traditionally used to subtle irritation of the immune system that results from immune response to pathogens. Traditionally, cooling effects are balanced with oils that stimulate warmth like basil, marjoram, or fennel. These oils stimulate circulation against the congestion that takes place in the immune system when inflammations arise. A blend made of a hot oil and a cold oil is useful in chronic inflammation situations. 
when these two are put in a carrier and applied topically to sore areas. The combination of fixed oils and essential oils together create a unique medical application topically that takes the place of salve. Thanks for watching.